Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of Black and Blue. So we got these humongous posters at the screening today for the film Black and Blue. <laughs> yeah. So Black and Blue tells the story of Officer West, a rookie officer who finds herself between a rock and a hard place as a black woman patrolling over the streets she used to live. Things get much more complicated when she witnesses fellow officers commit a murder. All while her body cam is recording. From there, she has to evade both police and criminals as she tries to expose the truth and fight for justice. So on the surface, Black and Blue presents some really interesting questions, some really interesting quorums that we don't get a lot of. We have a lot of race-related filmmaking this day and age, but we haven't really discussed the feeling and the awkwardness, if we're being honest, of the Black cop patrolling black neighborhoods and the type of problems that can present both internally and outwardly as well as what that means to the community at large. So I was already interested. Plus we get a pretty cool idea that's very like training day-esque with the whole stick together type thing. But the trailers, eh, they bordered. They had me mixed on what I was going to see, and I think they showed a little bit too much. Heading into the film, I was hopeful for something good, but still a bit nervous. And in the end, that's basically where I fell leaving the film. I think it was all right. It was a solid enough movie, but one that definitely just plays it too safe. So let's go ahead and talk about the positives first. I need to start off with Naomi Harris as our lead because she is amazing in this movie. She's such a good actress and she completely elevates the material that she's given. She's able to bring tension where it is otherwise lacking. She brings empathy and humanity into small moments and scenes constantly throughout this film. You can feel her work. You feel her presence and she does a great job great job in this movie as does Tyrese Gibson it's nice to see him get a little bit different of a role a little bit more of a serious role in this day and age and I think he does very well of course we have Frank Grillo here as well but I mean if we're being honest he's playing a role that we've seen him play quite a bit and the other actors here they they waver from okay to huh, not so good including another headliner name that unfortunately I'll be talking about in the negative. But our lead to Naomi Harris and Tyrese Gibson really elevate the material and bring a little bit of heft to the film at large. I also think the entire third act is pretty entertaining. Really all of the action-y set pieces are entertaining. They build enough suspense, they build enough tension through them that, you know, you're hooked, they're fun, they're exciting to watch, and you clearly have an investment in our main character because, you know, she's morally correct across the board. And so you kind of have that stake with her. You want to see her succeed. And that really is a testament to Naomi Harris, I think, as an actress, that you do connect with her and you're really rooting for her. And honestly, that is what lifts that third act and gives it as much suspense and tension as it does. But the third act is a lot of fun. And as I said, all of the action, all of the action set pieces, the shootouts, all of that stuff works really well for me. The concept works really well for me. And as kind of just a general cop action thriller, I think this works fine. I do think mass audiences will be good with this film. I think they'll enjoy the film. They'll get exactly what they came for. It delivers what it presents in those trailers. And sometimes that's enough. However, that's going to lead us into our negatives because I wanted more. <laughs> My problem here is just the script at large. The script is not good. Uh, the dialogue is terrible. The story structure feels like maybe it could work, but it fails because the action sets and the big chases and such are fun and they get you excited. They are full of tension. But when that's not happening, 
it just kind of dissipates and you're like just kind of counting down until we get to the next moment the next confrontation and a good thriller a good action thriller like this should have tension pretty much start to finish you should be on the edge of your seat here now you get plenty of time to just chill out and relax <laughs> it's also very hand fisted very heavy on its messaging and on the points it's trying to make whether it be cop brutality or you know police relations with minority communities the relationship between minorities and minority police all of that is just handled so obvious and really just smashes you over the head but here's the problem it doesn't delve into them so it just smashes you and runs away instead of staying and really like getting into the mess of it all we just get throwaway lines about oh you've got to pick a side blue or black but we don't really go in depth with what that is like what does that actually present just barely graze the surface of an issue that again is not talked about much and is really interesting it's a very deep complex issue that deserved a major motion film and instead i mean it was there kind of in the background and then the same thing with police brutality we we get a little bit deeper into that one but not deep enough just it leaves you frustrated because you want more and then i said i would circle back around Mike Coulter, oh, this is not good. I actually think he was miscast in the role, period. He is very large and can be an intimidating presence, but oh, that performance fell way flat for me. I don't know. I just wasn't buying him in this drug boss role. His performance itself fell flat. None of that worked. And in saying that, the characters just don't really work because they're all pretty, that's kind of one note, a lot of stereotypes. The stereotypical asshole white cops, the stereotypical minority drug lord and ghettos, the stereotypical women with their kids in the ghettos. It's all there. And even the characters who progress a little bit throughout the film, uh, they they don't really. I mean, you can see it coming from a mile away, what they're going to do, where they're going to go. So we're just dealing in a bunch of stereotypes running around, a bunch of archetypes and caricatures that don't really feel like lived in real people. Again, the only thing that saves that are strong performances from our two leads who do bring humanity and more of a, a depth to their character. So overall, Black and Blue is fine. On a base level, it delivers what it sets out to give audiences. And those trailers represent the film pretty well. So you know what you're getting yourself in for. And if that looks entertaining to you, if that looks like something you'd be interested in, I think you're going to have a good time with this film and walk out satisfied. And I would give it a matinee. Unfortunately, it's just so surface level. It plays everything so safe. And that was a big bummer and let down for me personally. So I would give Black and Blue a rental. It just left me wanting a lot more. So that is my review of Black and Blue. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you excited to see black and blue and what is your favorite film with police officers in the leading roles let me know either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on twitter i love you all so much for your continued support Mwah. thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye